So you got your DNA results, you open it up, and there's thousands of matches there. And yet, when you email all these people, they don't answer you back. What's up with that? Howdy, I'm Andy Lee with Family History Fanatics, and this is a segment of DNA. If you've been frustrated from not getting contacted by matches or not being able to find anything from this, I understand. And that is something that, as genealogists, we're going to deal with forever. I want to talk about, though, why that is the case with DNA. Now, one complaint I've heard a lot from people is, why don't people who test DNA actually put a tree up to show how they're related to other people? And really, there's several reasons for that. First off, why did the people test in the first place? Genetic testing has been around for about 15 years or so, and different companies have focused on different things. So for instance, 23andMe, one of their major focus is medical research and being able to report medical history through DNA a lot of people who have tested through 23andMe did so just for the medical information. And so they're not interested in genealogy, and it makes perfect sense why they wouldn't respond to anybody who is inquiring about genealogy. Another reason why people test is really for the novelty of the ethnicity or admixture results. And that's what you see advertised by the big companies as the primary reason to be tested. Find out where you're from. Now, when genetic testing was hundreds of dollars to have it done, I can understand why most people wouldn't. But now, DNA testing for these results is, in many cases, as cheap as $49. And if you're buying some of these kits on eBay, I've heard people report prices as low as $35. So in that case, think about all the things that you spend $35 to $50 on and hey, this is just another novelty thing that some people find interesting, but again, they have no interest in genealogy, and so it doesn't go any further than that. So those are two big reasons why people might be tested, but they're not interested in genealogy. But what about the genealogists? Because sometimes there are people that obviously are interested in genealogy, like on GEDmatch, but they don't respond. And I'll admit I'm guilty of this too. Genealogy for most of us is a hobby. It's not what we do full time, but it's what we do when we come home from work or maybe on the weekends or when we're on vacation. If we're retired, maybe we do that a lot, but sometimes, hey, there might be something else that we're doing. And so our interest in it waxes and wanes over time. And that may be where we're not doing it for a day or two days. It might be that we take a break for several months. And so just the general interest that people have in their hobby and what time they're devoting to it also affects whether or not people send that information. Another reason genealogists may not have all the information on that website has to do with what their specific research goals are. For instance, I know roughly five generations of all of my ancestors, at least their names, and I have some dates and stuff. But from a research standpoint, there's really only about three lines of the, you know, 32, 64 possible lines of that, that I'm actively doing any kind of research on. And so even though some people may want information on something else, I may not know anything about that line to be able to help them. I know the first couple of generations, but I don't know anything beyond that. And I'm not going to stop the research that I'm interested in just because somebody else has an interest on something else. Ideally, we're all trying to find people who are interested in the same things as us that we can work together. Now, that's always been the case for genealogy. The difference is, is we used to write letters before and now we can send emails. And so we'd hope that the communication would be faster. But again, because of our interest waxing and waning, it may be several months before we hear back from people. But then we get down to the tree. Why don't people who test on DNA, why don't genealogists who test on DNA have a tree attached to it that other people can reference. Well, once again, I'll admit I'm guilty of this. I use 23andMe and Family Tree DNA and Ancestry and MyHeritage and GEDmatch, and it's looking like I'll also be using Living DNA here in the near future. I don't have a tree on all of them. 
Some of them I use for specific purposes and I don't need a tree in order to do it for that. Others of them, the putting a tree on is really too cumbersome and so I don't. And finally, most of my genealogy information I keep on family search. And every year or two, I will go and I will download information in Roots Magic to create a GEDCOM file based on that. And then I will upload that to my heritage and ancestry and the other places so that I'm not actually physically working on those. They're just a copy of what I've done and what other people have done on Family Search Family Tree. So one of the reasons why me and lots of other people don't put a tree on is because there's so many options. We may already have a tree that we're trying to manage somewhere else and we don't want to have to worry about managing it everywhere. And I know, you know, a lot of people may not like that because we'd all want this information right now. But again, I think it's important to remember that, hey, this is a hobby for most of us. And each of us have different goals of what we're trying to do. And it should be fun. So be patient with people. Recognize that there's lots of reasons why they may not be interested in genealogy or why they may not have the information available to you that you want. Keep pressing forward. Keep trying to solve that puzzle. If you have reasons of why you don't have a tree on your DNA, put it in the comments below and we can talk about that. Be sure to check out our website, www.familyhistoryfanatics.com so that you can find out about upcoming e-conferences that we're going to be a part of.